Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video, I want to talk about this uh, compact three slot uh, ISA backplane that I built for my project. Um, so it's a backplane like this is actually why I've recently put my entire PC project on a single card um, so that I could just occupy one slot on a board like this. Um, Real quick, my this video is being sponsored by GLC PCB. Um, I've been using them for a while now. Um, pretty much if you go back through my videos, ever since I've been having PCBs made, um, they've been the manufacturer I've used. I actually haven't used anybody else. Their prices are good. If you're looking for fast turnaround, they've got good shipping. Um, and they're just making the blanks. I solder the rest together. Um, you know, originally I thought about trying to make my own PCBs, you know, from scratch. And with the price that these are from GLC PCB, it's unnecessary to even go down that road. So anyway, um, let me talk about this board. So it's got three slots. There's nothing fancy about it. It's got no resistors, capacitors. It just has a USB-C for power and a push button for on and off. On the back here, you can see I've only soldered the few pins that are connected and then of course the housing there. Um, I measured this out. It's spaced the same as ATX, uh, 0.8 inch between each slot. Um, you could go down to 0.75, which was like some of the older PCs were that. The original PC was one inch between slots. I, I was thinking bare minimum, you got to go maybe, I think it was 0.65. But I was even thinking about making this just a two slot uh, adapter. Let me show in the back plane what I'm, what I'm getting at here. So when I measured this out, it's bridging between two rows on your back plane. And with two card slots, I could probably go just one row but it's gonna only leave barely one, one, uh, one row of, of holes exposed, where if I've got a bridge across, I figured let's put, it, put as many as we can, which being three. Uh, you might be able to get four on here and maybe go over, but then just leaving just barely one row. Um, so that's what, this is what I mostly created this for. You've got your, your address and data pins here and your memory read write on the back here. So everything that you really need access to will come over here and it leaves you two rows to, to prototype on. And then of course you just plug your board in there and it works surprisingly well. I'll demo it here in a minute. Um, I was also thinking maybe get to the point to like 3D print a case for this and just have like a little mini tower just big enough for the the motherboard this now where this creates limitations is it only leaves room for like one mass storage device and i'll demo this with both a floppy drive and the usb so let me move this box out of the way now What's really handy is because the, I do have the pin headers soldered on, which doesn't necessarily need to be done if you're not using this on a breadboard, but it um, fits neatly to where the tab is raised up just enough. It, it's not quite there, but it's just enough. So I still will probably put this on a, a box just to keep the tabs from being out of alignment. Let's uh, turn everything here. Now, I've got my power supply, but that's just to prop up my screen there. I'm gonna be using this USB-C. This is actually for a Raspberry Pi. Now, I haven't tried this with uh, a very low volt or, or ramp uh, power um, adapter, but definitely, you know, they make, they make uh, PC power supplies now that are USB, so. I think if you need more watts or whatever, then you'll be able to do that. 
So I've got my VGA card. Get that in there. I'm gonna plug in the power. Forget to hook up the keyboard. I think it's annoying when you all of a sudden don't have a keyboard. And, and then we'll just plug in our USB here. Now, I've always been a big fan of this USB for the mass storage because it's modern. It's very portable. But for those that want to use a floppy drive, we'll get to that here in a second. As you can see, it's booting just fine. I like that it's almost nearly silent run. That's pretty neat. As you can see, it's uh, working. Uh, screen's kind of out of focus, but that's that doesn't really matter. We're, we're just looking at this run. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it off. Now, one thing about this, obviously it doesn't have a 12 volt rail. So you're gonna run into issues with things that require that. I'm going to use this floppy drive adapter, or emulator, I mean, that will, uh, that only requires five volts. Regular floppy drive, you gotta have the 12 volts as well. So I'm gonna put this multi IO card. I've had a few people ask me which one I'm using. This is just a generic multi IO. Probably got it from a thrift store years ago. Um, I think it's like a gold star brand. I'm just hooking up the five volt power off the pins here. I was thinking maybe on the next version to uh, maybe put like little five volt power up here to come to the, the floppy uh, emulator. So I can get that in the shot here. Uh, little wires are kind of short, but. Okay, so you can see that's powered on just fine. And there you see the little green light came on, so it's reading from the drive. And being a little uh, floppy drive, it's going to be very slow. Uh, zoom in here. As you can see, it's running really stable. Um, now, the only thing is, so it's trying to install the mouse. There is a mouse connected to the serial port and it stopped playing. And I'm wondering if we met our voltage limitations here. I do have another power supply. Maybe I'll grab that here, see if that'll make a difference. But um, let's go MSD, see what we can come up with there. You know, just uh, recently I was doing this, I typed in MSD and I kept getting this weirdest error. It was a hard drive error and uh, it seemed like it was certain cards were doing it, or certain, like, mother, the little motherboard card was doing it, and ones, certain ones weren't. I was thinking I had a bunch of bad chips or something crazy like that. Anyway, it turned out the right protect on my drive was set. The It's got a manual right protect switch, and that was creating the error. So, sometimes it's a simple solution. All right, so, you can see on here, if you can read that, B20, 64K, there is no extended memory. It's just a glitch. Um, MS-DOS, no mouse, it shows the game adapter. Uh, disk drives A and B, it doesn't show a C, there's no C. So, as you can see, the three slots are enough, just barely enough to run a full system, but that's the end of your expansion. But as I stated, this is mostly for adapting to a breadboard if you want to prototype off your pins. Now, obviously, if you're going to prototype directly off the ISA bus, you got to be real careful not to short something out because then your system just won't run and you may cause some damage if you're not careful with what you connect. Um, I'm going to reach over here and grab a, a, a power supply that's got a little bit more. We'll see if this... Uh, Let's see if this helps. So let's zoom back out here. 
So I'm using, oh, I, if I can see this here. So anyway, we'll, we'll just try that out. I can't quite read this, the specs on that. Oh, that's interesting. That one doesn't seem to want to work. Maybe it's a bad power supply. Alright. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that power supply, but... So there you go, um, that's the basic system running. Um, let's go ahead and move it to the breadboard here. All right, that's being slow enough. They, the floppy drives are always so slow compared to the USB. I'm gonna set this out of the way. So and then I just always put it right up to the top. Center it good. I've already got I've already got the jumpers in place for the five volt and ground over to the rail. So, and then I just, and then as you can see, the bracket doesn't actually rest on the breadboard. It's actually spaced up just a little bit. So it actually works out really nice. And then I'm just gonna put on the USB. And that's actually also why, which on this board's not on there, the pin header for the USB module and then you could actually have your USB for your C drive and your floppy drive as well. I want to say I tested it that way once. So there you go. All plugged in. Um, I'm not going to take the time in this video to actually like prototype something out. Maybe I'll make another video demo on like a 8255 or something prototyped out on the board. See, I booted so much faster with the C drive. So. So anyway, uh, thanks for checking out my video today.